Hello there and welcome back. Thanks for joining us. Another Monday, another month, and another whole new series of topics for demystifying post-production. So thanks for joining us again. And uh, this month, as you can see on the screen here, we're looking at visualization in Cinema 4D. And we've got a variety of different topics. Um, I'll talk more about um, what we're doing today in a second because we've got the wonderfully talented Oliver Lueza with us and also Darren's joining us. Um, hey there, guys. Hey. Hi, Simon. Hi, Darren. Hello. Hey there. Hey, everyone. So, um, and as um, Kent and Jay have been greeting us, a, a happy Easter Monday to you. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you. And hi, Drake, as well. Thanks for joining us. And the uh, I, I haven't been missing. I've just been in the background doing lots of supporting things because the, the team are the important ones, as you know. But I just wanted to introduce things this month because we have been listening to you. Thank you so much for your emails and also for answering those questions on the surveys. And so like, by popular request, we're running the entire month on visualization this month. So we're starting off with Oliver's fantastic visualization, which we'll talk about in a second, of organic vines and trees. You can apply this to multiple different types of plants. But as you can see from the page here, we're also going to be looking at product visualization, as well as some architectural and also some automotive and also related aspects to it. So if I just like click on the description, you'll see that it's not just how to do uh, some of the models, it's how to speed things up and how to be more efficient and how to look more natural and visually interesting and practical techniques and, and so on. So also we listen to you and some of you like to hear about Redshift and some of you like to hear about rendering in Cinema 4D. So we're doing both. And as the sessions progress, we'll try and do a number of techniques which you can apply to your specific workflow. So we, we, we recognize that it's good to use the things that you're using and have techniques on that, but also it's sometimes useful to see some other workloads and how um, other people use it. So we're trying to cover both of those. And also don't forget that uh, next week we have the 3D Motion Show. So that's, that's happening next week. You can sign up on the Maxon site. And we've got more amazing artists who'll be running through a whole series of topics. So please join us for that. And also, yes, we are recording this session. So as per usual, if you go to our YouTube site or go to YouTube and see Maxon Training Team, then you can see all the recordings for all last year and all this year as well. So we've got all the recordings for the creative collaboration in Red Giant Universe as well. And if you fancy testing your knowledge, don't forget, you can go to the learn button on maxon.net and you can take this free one hour elementary knowledge test just to see where you stand in terms of topics in cinema that you need to have a look at. And then if you take that test, then we've got links that support where you can go to that in Cineversity and also other links too. Great. So let, without further ado, um, let's um, introduce properly Oliver Lueza, who is creative director at Believe, which is a wonderful creative company in Santiago in Chile. And um, Oliver is also a master trainer for us. And so he is, a, as well as being super talented and fantastic at teaching these subjects, he also runs the studio or creatively helps run the studio. And he's a lovely person to boot. So we're delighted to have you. Thank you for joining us, Oliver. Thank you for the introduction, Simon. Hi, everyone. So Oliver's going to run through, by the way, um, I forgot to mention, we've got um, the, his uh, website up here with some of the work on there, some of the amazing creative work that they've done. And so if you go to believe.tv, you can find out more about that. And we'll post these links as well in the, the usual place. We'll put them on the chat in answers to the questions. And also you'll see these links in the description on the YouTube site too. So oh. here we go, a couple of quick questions just before we jump in. Um, da, 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 could you send a thank you? <laughs> Oh, thank you to Darren. This is from Andrews. Thank you to Darren for answering his <laughs> question. Right. You're very <laughs> so welcome. This, very cool. This, this is this is the other thing why why we're here. We want to answer your questions and make it useful for you. So please yes. jump in. And um, Oliver's got lots of interesting things to say. But if you want to ask him about any of the techniques as we go along, please let us know, and we'll interrupt him. Not too much, hopefully, but we'll kind of make it useful for you as well as seeing those sessions. So I'm going to hand over the screen to Oliver. Let's make you the presenter. Here we go. And there, you should have that little icon there. Okay. Thanks, Simon. Hi to everyone again. 
I'm going to turn off my camera in order to have better good, connection. Good idea. Just a quick note on that. Uh, we tend to turn these cameras off to make the interface bigger, but um, let us know. If you prefer to have the cameras on um, for the next number of sessions, please let us know. There's, yes. there's a variety of questions we've we've had. Please turn them off, please turn them on. So we're trying to react to, to see what works best for you. So over, over to you, yes. Oliver. Okay. So oh, let me turn off this. Um, okay, today we're going to try to do, I'm going to explain to you how to do this kind of effect. Let me know if you are seeing this in a correct way. So yeah. we are trying to do this. Okay, we are try, trying to to bring back to life a dying vine tree. Okay, this is our, our main target today. And this effect was uh, used in this spot, in this shot. As you can see, the idea here was uh, we were in a in a like a dying vineyard and this uh, girl is passing through the vineyard and she has some magical or mystical powers and she brings the vine back to life so this is the the the, the final shot and i have a little breakdown for that as you can see we have originally uh, a clean plate and then we add everything in 3d like so. By the way, we use uh, at that time the, the motion tracker uh, of Cinema 4D. It worked really well. So this is our shot. And the base for, for this effect is um, what I showed you before, this. So we're going to, to dive on these files. And hopefully, hopefully, hopefully you, we are going to learn some really interesting thing. So let's jump to Cinema 4D. And when when I approach to this kind of uh, projects, I always try to think in a setup uh, which uh, would be something like a bulletproof, or we can say like client proof, because a client always uh, asks us for uh, doing some changes. And uh, the client likes to, to do those changes uh, in the last week of the project or maybe three or two days before the deadline. So we have to be able to 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 make those changes without compromise the whole project, without compromise the, the whole effect. So uh, I'm always trying to to do setups that uh, that is a flexible setup, is a controllable setup. And, and in this case, I separate the effect in my mind at least uh, in four parts. Uh, we need to have a controllable main shape, uh, and for that purpose, I'm going to use the hair system. Uh, the second part is uh, having controllable branch animation. So for that purpose, I'm going to use the most plane object. The third part would be uh, meshing the branches. We need some geometry, some some mesh to 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 uh, give some some match to the to the, the branches and the last part but not least is making the leaves so these four parts uh, are at the end the, the the core of the the whole setup so the idea here is, is and at the end of, of this this uh, exercise uh, the idea uh, it is that if you have to change some of these parts you you are not compromising the the whole the whole effect so move on to the first uh, step so here i have my hair uh, object uh, already set up i use these uh, trunks and and these trunks are uh, 3d photo scan models i actually went to our uh, vineyard and i pick up some dead trunks from the ground and then I, I, I made this, uh, this 3D photo scan models. I pick like, I don't know, like five or, or, or six 
of this uh, trunk, and then I, I, I made some combination in this T shape. Almost all the vineyards ha has the, the same the same shape for for the for the trunk. You know, it's like a T. And then I connect the the hair object with our geometry with a polygon selection. Okay, this is the the the, the main part. So the, the the branches they are being born from 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 this this polygon selection. So why I use the hair system instead uh, of just model the the, the the branches, for example, and and that is because you have a lot of control of this uh, setup. I'm going to turn uh, off some deformers here. I'm going to talk. Uh, about that in a in a moment. Let me update the, the viewport. And here we have uh, some guides. I had uh, two elements just because I have to separate a uh, base branch, uh, base trunks. But for for both of, of these objects, is quite the same setup. And uh, the the nice thing in the uh, hair system is that you have a lot of control of the main shape. You can brush your guides, you can move the whole thing with some other tools. You have a lot of control over here. I mean, you can find that in the simulate uh, menu, hair object and hair tools, hair selection. And I put it in a, in a layout specifically to do a hairstyle. And as I said, you you can you can do a lot of things right here. For example, if you can scale the whole thing, you can do that. If you can cut with a like a for example a dome shape, you can do that. In this case, if I select the other one, for example, you can do this if the client wants to do that. So for me, it's quite a natural decision to do it in the hair system because you have a lot of control of the guides. And the idea here is have a one hair per guide. And at the end, we're going to have one branch per guide. So that, that is the, the main thing. So um, you, you can, for example, add more guides. And since uh, we have uh, guides already brushed, for example, the new guides uh, are going to be interpolated between them. So it's a super non-destructive uh, uh, way to, to work in this case. So uh, that, that is the, 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 the main thing about the, the hair system. Then you have kind of a second level of control on the hair material shader. If you go to, for example, to pink a little bit, and curl a little bit, and I'm going to press this frame update. You are going to end with this kind of pretty organic uh, uh, look. As you can see, we have a lot of control of the main shape. So um, that is for, for the hair systems. At the end of, of this uh, presentation, uh, Darwin is going to try to rebuild this thing in a more basic and more comprehensive way. If we have uh, enough time, um, I'll also be in... sharing that file. Sorry to interrupt. I'll also share that file um, cool. with uh, with everyone, so they'll have something yeah. to open up and check out. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, that is the the, the the main shape part. And uh, if we move on to the second part, the animation part, uh, you maybe are uh, asking. Uh, to yourself, why don't use, for example, the the, the same hair system to animate the, the whole thing? And it, it is a good idea, but uh, has some some handicaps. And in this case, is it is that you are going to use dynamic uh, uh, calculation. And even though these dynamic calculation are super good, they are not so uh, uh, flexible. So if I can play press, for example, here. Uh, we're going to have a nice uh, kind of calculation, but you don't have uh, like a, a real-time feedback. You 
uh, always that you are in a, a scrub, a scroll, sorry, scroll, and the timeline you are going to to lose the the effect. So uh, for me, this is not very useful when I have to change uh, things without uh, catch some calculation or something like that. So so we're going to move to the next step, and this step is the most blind object. And before to explain this, I'm going to show you real quick how a most blind work. So let me make a most blind object. I'm going to hide the whole thing and give me just one second here. So um, in a nutshell, most blind is a generator from a uh, demograph menu and it, it generates a spline and uh, this the this spline is made of a, a bunch of points in this case we have a 100 uh, points i'm going to decrease that number to 10 just to uh, demonstrate the, the my 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 point uh, you have different you have different modes to 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 use it uh, you have simple spline to control. In this case, we are in the simple mode with just uh, a linear uh, spline with, again, like 10 uh, points. So the thing is that you can affect these uh, points with a MoGraph effector. So the MoGraph effector, in this case, for example, a random effector, is going to uh, modify the position of every point. So uh, the, the random factor is is, is uh, treat them like uh, clones. So if I turn down the strength, you can see that in in the in the end we are going to affect the position of uh, every point because the parameters are in position uh, setup. So. But the more interesting attribute for me on the most prime is that you can also affect them, affect the points with forces. And for example, if you put some gravity here, I'm going to turn off and turn on. The thing is, the thing is that a forces object uh, treat the points like if uh, you have some uh, weight on every point, and in this case, it's a like a gradual or uh, incremental uh, weight. So, in this case, for example, the gravity uh, has no uh, influence on the, the the first point, the the point number zero, but uh, it has a 100% influence on the last one. So, and you have all values in between those points. So this gives you a lot of um, control and it gives you a, a look very natural, a very organic uh, look. If you put, for example, another force, for example, you put uh, turbulence, we're going to crank up the scale. If we press play, you're going to have something like this. And it seems uh, like uh, something uh, dynamic, something organic animated, but it's just a most playing with some forces. It's super useful, and this uh, work in a in a kind of uh, real time feedback for you. So it's not a, a real calculation. It's not a real dynamic. It's kind of a, a kind of a real a, a fake dynamic, and it works like a like a, an inverse kinematic change. So uh, this is pretty good because if you use that attribute. I'm going to go over here, but not in a simple mode, but in a spline mode. And when you are in a spline mode, you have to fit it, fit the, the, the most spline with another um, spline. And it's something that I forgot to, to mention before. It is that you have to generate a spline from the hair object. So in this case, we have a guide, a hair per guide, in the in the root mode as guide. 
and then you have to generate a spline. Okay, you go here. Uh, for for default, this is in none, but you are uh, going to to have to to do it in a spline mode. So the hair system is generating right now a spline, and the most spline object is within um, that uh, that spline. And uh, the most spline is uh, rewriting the the the, the whole spline. In this case, we have a generation mode on vertex, so it, which means that uh, every point on the original spline is uh, going to be maintained on the on the most spline. But you can change uh, this with even distribution of points, step distribution of point count. Uh, that's why this object is really good to rewrite splines. So um, and it is work like uh, like I showed you before. Uh, with forces, with some uh, more graph effector. So if we turn on our global animation effectors, I'm going to go to here. Let me see why is affecting just affecting just one. Okay, that is a update issue. So right here we have a gravity force with a field. A linear field in order to remap the influence of this gravity into the the most plane. So I animate that linear field, and we have that effect. Okay, so if I scroll, you can see real time feedback on your view viewport. And that's why I use the the, the most plane object. And I put some delay spring and delay blend. On the the most plane uh, effector uh, field, because uh, I want to smooth a little bit the effect at the end, and the springs is in order to 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 give them a, a little bit of the more uh, natural or organic movement at the end also. So if I enable that, we're going to have this kind of effect cool so right now we have two systems working together so move on to the next step which is meshing the branches we need a mesh obviously in order to 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 have uh, actual branches so in this case i made this really simple uh model that is because we are not going to have an extreme close-up or something like that. We are going to uh, be in a medium shot. So this amount of detail is good enough for us. And I'm going to use a spline wrap deformer. The spline wrap deformer is an object that allows you to um, deform this uh, or modify the, this mesh with a spline. So we are going to use the most spline in order to rewrite the the influence of the, the the spline wrap so you have to align your your spline wrap in the same axis axis that you you have your model so i'm going to turn on both and i'm going to turn on the the, the trunk let me change the view settings and Let me see. Uh, since we are fitted the the spline wrap with our most spline, the interesting part on the the spline wrap is that it works like a cloner object. When you have a, a more than one segment on a spline. The, the the spline wrap automatically clone your uh, geometry your mesh in in every segment so that's why we have a uh, this result so if you press play again you are going to see the same effect but now with a mesh in every branch 
So you can do some tweaks here. You can go to the spline wrap and change the size. For example, in this case, if you want to change the size on the tips, you can go to the curve uh, of the size in the spline wrap. You can go to the strength of the, 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 the effect. You can make this kind of effect. You can also make this on the most plane attributes. If you go here, I'm going to turn off the delay because it's not working on real time. But if you want to make some grow growing effect, you can do that. And right now we have like three systems working together. We have the um, hair system generator uh, first. Then we have the most plan generator. And right now we have the spline wrap deformer working together. And again, this is real time so if our client asks for for example uh remove one of the branch uh, we can do that and i'm going to show you that uh, later so moving on to our last but not least thing we uh, have to add some leaves obviously in this case i took some photos uh, from re uh, from real leaves and i model the like the, the basic shape because I want to make some uh, deformation in order to 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 have a, a more organic look. I made a couple of them and I made also these little bind shots in order to get more realism at the end in in the in the final effect. You know, so I'm going to turn on the cloner object uh, which have which has the, 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 the leaves uh, on it and the shots on it. And I'm going to turn on this. And we are going to use the uh, object mode. And when you use the object mode and you feed uh, the cloner with, a, uh, with a, a spline, in this case, it's the most spline again, you had a lot of control on the actual effect. For example, I'm going to go to the top of this let me show you uh is okay here so for example uh, you have control over the the position of the leaves over the scale of the leaves or the amount of the how many how many leaves do you want here so uh, in this case let me see where in this part you can decrease the, the amount of leaves. You can increase the amount of leaves. You can offset the leaves. As you can see, you can uh, add some variation to that. You can offset the starting point. For example, if uh, our client said, OK, we always cut or prune uh, the, the, the leaves uh, close to the, to the root, you can do that. For example, right here, I'm going to have it leaves only on on the on the tip of the branch so you have a lot a lot of control in 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 this case and i want to turn off my effectors because the the for for default the cloner object look like this so i, I add some random uh, rotation with a random effector okay here then i add some random wind I use a random effector in order to, to, to have some like a wind effect at the end. If you can see, I don't know if you are seeing this, but the, the leaves are moving right now. Yeah, yeah, we can we can see it a little bit. Cool. cool. And if I uh, enable the whole system, I use also the, a plane scale and a plane effector to control the scale of the, the leaves and a plane plane effector to control the color on the the material you know and for that purpose i use a color user data uh, in a rich uh, material blender so uh, if i press play we have this a uh, state in our vine okay uh we have our 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 leaves scale down shrink it 
and shrink them. And if I press play, we're going to see the whole system working together. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Cool. It looks, it's very cool. That is pretty nice. And the good part is that, and that's why I try to think always in a bulletproof uh, kind of setup, even uh, even when uh, uh, that is impossible in, in, in some cases. If the client says, says for example, or asks us for, uh, I like this, but I want to have like a longer uh, branch over, for example, over here. You just go to the uh, hair system part. And let me see if I turn on the, the viewport. And I can, let me see, I can pick this specific a guide and I can scale that specific branch and make it longer. So it's super, super uh, controllable. It's, it's like a, a super good setup in order to do some changes. You know, even if the client say, okay, I want to remove that specific branch when we press remove it and it's gone. And the client, if the client said, I want to add a specific branch over here, you can even you you, you can use uh, like a add guide uh, tool, for example. I'm going to shrink this value, just one step, just one. And for example, I can go to this and put some branch here, and is uh, <laughs> um, the the branch is being born from from that specific part so as you can see this is a super useful like kind of setup and in which uh, one we have like at least four different systems working together in order to have a totally flexibility to do this kind of stuff and That's for awesome. example yeah uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good one if you go to i'm going to render instance on the planner if you copy this for example, the whole thing. And you put, let me see if it would work. Okay, let me, uh, and, and, and something happened here, and that is because the the the, the one thing about the most spline is when you are rewrite a, a spline, you have to have the most spline in the zero uh, position. So let me do that. Let me do that. Coordinate. Okay, right now it's the zero position of the local space. But if you take this out of the hierarchy and make it in a zero position, and then you can go to the inside, you can have the effect apply into and then that's what I did in on the on the final shot I duplicate uh, with with different uh, variation of trunks but I duplicate the whole thing and it's work like a charm so did you use yeah. the cloner for the columns for the yeah. rows okay yeah I use the column but uh, because we have just a, a certain space, with the, the dynamics uh, vines, with with the actual animation, we did like uh, I I don't remember very well, but like uh, five or six uh, different vines, dynamics vines, and the rest was like just uh, um, like a okay. fixed fixed one, you know, okay. not the the whole the whole setup. But as you can see, this worked really really well, and you can do whatever change that you want. That's awesome. You have complete cool. control over like the shape and like every part of the vine and the leaves. That's really Com great. Complete control. I, I mean, you can go to the hair system, you can go to the most plant system and make some uh, some grow uh, growing effect. Uh, it's, it's pretty nice. And you can go to the leaves cloner and 
make some changes over that. It's, it's pretty pretty uh, robust. Uh, it's a pretty robust yeah. system. So yeah, it, it really is. Okay, so Darin, what do you think if, if we try to rebuild this in a more basic way? Oh, I shall, I'd shall love we? To. Yeah. Do you want me to do it, or do you want to give it a crack? Uh no. Let Let's do it. And okay. and if you, I don't know if you, if somebody have some question right now. Uh, let me see. Let do me... You have do have a question from Jonathan. He was he was saying that um, the leaves, the individual leaves, look really impressive. Um, mm -hmm. how are they affected by dynamic lighting? Would you do anything differently if you had to have the dynamic lighting affect them as they animate? Uh, the, the dynamic lighting, you mean like the, the change of the color? That, that is the, the question? I assume so. Jonathan, please weigh in if you've got any further information to that question. Yeah, for, for but I think that that, that, that is the, the, the main thing. If you, I'm going to go to the my clones and I'm going to go to instance mode just to show how I build the, the 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 color change from brownish or withered uh, kind of leaves to uh, more green, more alive, more healthy leaf. Um, I'm going to go to one of my materials and I'm going to show you what is my uh, shader setup. So I have two materials. One of them is like a, a, a healthy leaf with a green color, and the other one is the, the same texture, uh, passing through a color correct, and this color correct is making making it more uh, brown, more like a dying or witcher uh, leaf. And then I I am using a Material Blender node. So uh, this node uh, allows you to blend uh, two different materials node. So I'm driven this uh, material render with this color user data. And the color data is taking the information of the MoGraph and color. What information is that? The information of this plane effector that, that is uh, affecting the, the, the cloner object. And if I go to turn off my material, you can see right here that when the, the, the field of this color which is this one, uh, pass through the vine, we're going to have a nice gradient from black to white. I don't know if you uh, are seeing that. Let me. Yeah, we can see the, that. The yeah. Yeah. Can so, you also show us the color remap tab for this field? The color remap. Yeah. I'm going to color, me, uh, color uh, remap. Thank you. I have a I have a gradient here, so I'm I, I'm uh, affecting the 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 remap of this plain color field, which is in mode a uh, fields color. So it's taking the color of this field, this linear field, and it goes from black to white, and we have this gradient. And this gradient is uh, going to be used on the the um, the, the shader uh, material blender, the material blender node. So we are taking this gradient on the viewport in order to driven the mix of these two uh, shader with one, which one is, is the, the, the brown leaf and the, the other one is the, the healthy, the green one. That, that is, that is uh, how I, I make that, uh, make that, that effect. I don't know if it, is that responds to the, the, the question of Jonathan, but I think so. That's a great technique. In fact, we got a follow-up question from Aaron, who was saying that um, how much of this is figuring out your um, your own R&D to make this work, and how much is using from techniques you've seen other people do? That is a difficult question because you are always uh, seeing some some things to 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 learn. So I I have been used uh, Cinema 4D like for uh, 10 years right now, 11 years right now. So in in some point when you have a lot of experience, things are came up in your mind like naturally. 
So in this case, when I when I saw the, the, the requirement for the effect, I start to think how I can control this in a in a in a good in a like in a good way. How how I can have a flexibility. So I I can say that I figure it out, but at the same time I figure out because I have experience and I have experience because I learn from other people. But this technique is not that something that I see before, like the, like in, in that in, in this way. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know if that's yeah. answer your your question. So we we don't have so uh, so enough time. Maybe Darren, you want to take over this? Sure, I'm happy to. Cool. cool. Uh, Let's do it. It's a great answer, by the way. Just whilst we swap screens, um, the the answer is, of course, it depends. But it's a bit like learning a language. At some point, you can't remember exactly. where, when when you learnt that particular bit of vocabulary or that new word. You just know it. So it's a good um, a good excuse to keep studying and keep watching other people's techniques so that you can kind of keep adding that to the memory bank. Yeah, I, and, and, and I would just point one thing, and I want to, to say this to, to our viewers. I love r and I mean, you have to do it because you are going to learn a lot from that uh, experimentation uh, time. And I always say to my coworkers, uh, try, try to think before you are, you are actually going to do that. Or are going to do something because uh, I would rather uh, spend more time at the beginning trying to figure out how you can have more control uh, over the, uh, over your setup instead of trying to fix something that is uh, made on a in a destructive way and and at the end you 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 are not you are not uh, to be able to do some changes. And, and in this industry, uh, the clients always, I mean, always <laughs> want some changes. And, and sometimes are really difficult, are really tough. So you have to be prepared for that. Yeah. This, so R&D, R &D, yeah, R&D time is a good, uh, a, a good way to, to, to learn things. Cool. Should I see how much I can get done? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Right. So I'm going to do a basic example here. I have um, a, I just added a basic cylinder to the scene, uh, put it on a different orientation and changed its size a bit and made it editable. And I've already selected some polygons here and I'm just going to add the hair. So I guess that'd be like step one and it's automatically going to use that polygon selection because that was active. Now I'm going to change the uh, root of the guides to uh, polygon or polygon area and then just control the number here. I'm going to have a relatively low number and there are a couple of other settings that uh, Oliver showed us. So like under dynamics, we want to turn that off because uh, as he uh, mentioned earlier, we're going to be using a gravity field uh, or a gravity force rather than actual uh, dynamic gravity. Um, we don't need to render the hairs, but we do need to generate splines from these guides. Now I can see way too many hairs. So in the hairs tab, we do uh, as guides. Yeah, I'll root yeah. there. Thank you. Awesome. Um, and you know, if you want to uh, tweak the shape, that overall shape, then we can go like hair selection and uh, you can, uh, let's see, you can select the do, 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 the tips or the guides. I'm going to go to the guides and I'm going to select like this one. And these two are pretty close together. So I'll select that yep. one and then we'll go like the simulate uh, tools brush and then we want to make sure we turn on selected only yeah. and then I can you know brush this so the this shape is going to be the um I'll turn that off now is going to be basically the uh, alive shape uh, one thing that is worth to mention is that you are going to have different results uh, uh, with different uh, kind of modes of a brush. If you, if you, for example, have the uh, tip mode or root mode mm -hmm. or guide mode, you are going to have different results with your uh, with your tools. For example, the, the brush tool 
is going to work differently if you you select uh, the tip or the root or the or the guide bone. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't want to get too yeah uh, caught up in in that, but you know you can see I'm just I just modified their shape a bit um, for better or for worse. So there's like the basic overall shape, and then to get that gravity on there, uh, let's see what you did. If I remember correctly, Oliver, was you mm -hmm. used the MoGraph Mo spline object yeah. set to the spline mode, and then you mm -hmm. told it to use as the source spline the hair. Yes. Okay, now we can hide the hair from the there view you that we only see the Mo spline. And then we added gravity to this Mo spline from the force's gravity. Exactly. Exactly. And there that is. And this is cool because if it's too droopy, you can like turn down the acceleration uh, to control how much the maximum gravity is. You can dial that in. So that's some very fine tuning there. Now, to get that the life going in, we uh, use that linear field. Uh, so I'll get that in there, go back to my model and model mode and move tool and shrink that down so here we have the uh, the dead branches let's pull that out there i'll go ahead and keyframe its x position we'll go to frame 80 move that across keyframe that so now we can see we're essentially blending from one state to the other uh, exactly with and without gravity uh not in that order <laughs> or yeah in that order um okay so then the geometry i don't have uh that same model so i'm just going to go with another cylinder here and i'm going to go ahead and turn down its radius to like 10 which i know to be too big but i'm doing it on purpose so i'm going to add as a child of this the spline wrap and that's really cool that um and you pointed this out that if you use a most spline here it's going to put it on every one now the axis is not correct because the cylinder goes up and down on the y so we need to do that now i can see that the size is too big maybe we need some more segments as well on the height so that it conforms to this and there's we'll turn that down for the rotation segments also. Um, and then we'll press play. And we can see them coming up like that. And, um, you know, let's see, where where was it that you were controlling the shape of these branches? Was it here in the can, spline wrap? Yeah, you can do do that on, on that field. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool because you you are maintaining your original original image, but you can do some tweaks on 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 the the spline wrap. Yeah, it's so fast too. Yeah, that's that's great. Um, okay, and then for the leaves, uh, I already have. Just so you guys can see, I will uh, solo hierarchy this. Um, I just have a simple. Uh, two planes one's like a stem and one is like the leaf um here i just have a basic material and in its color channel i have the mograph color shader okay and that is on this leaf group now i'll point out the axis of this group is at the pretty much the base of the stem so now i'm going to clone that onto uh these these vines so we'll uh, i'll alt click on the cloner and set it to object mode and i'm going to drag the most spline yeah in here so i'm not actually cloning it onto the um geometry exactly. of the cylinder but all of those uh splines and segments now the rotation's a bit off so i'll just say 90 degrees there and they're all rotated the same way so we can add one random effector uh only randomizing uh the rotation pitch. yes 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 just like just like so and um we'll just leave that one as is now to get the growth and the color effect well first the starting color i need to set on these so i'll in the cloner set its color here in the transform tab so i'll make them uh black 
and or you know what here let's just do like a brown to a green here um because i'm not going to get into the redshift stuff because of uh, time um so let's see we have the base color set in the cloner now i need another effector on this guy so i'm going to add a plane effector which will make the leaves uh, grow a little larger and change the color so in this uh, plane effector i want the scale oops uh, to get larger and I also want the color to be affected. So the color mode is set to fields color, which is fine, but I need a field. So I'm gonna take this linear field, which I'll call uh, linear gravity, and I'm going to uh, duplicate it. Now this duplicate, which I'll call um, linear life, um, it has the same keyframes, which I'll remove. I'll delete that track and I'll make it a child of the gravity one. And just so that the gravity um, comes first and then the color and the scale comes after, I'll make the linear life field a little shorter and pull it back behind like so. Now in to set the color, because the again, the plane effector is already doing the scale and it's set to fields color. Um, I'll apply that linear life field to this uh, plane effector, which is only affecting the leaves uh, cloner. And uh, in its color remap, we're gonna go to, well, it's already green, so that's perfect. Um, now, I wanted to start brown, so I'm gonna set this direction to negative X rather than positive. So now they start brown and small, it comes through and they grow larger. Um, and there's a lot of other things that um, Oliver showed um, to how he added like extra secondary motion with the delay effector and yeah. uh, you know added a lot more interest. Um, but this is like the basic, the basic, uh, most basic example. Um, yeah, that, that's the, 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 the whole thing in a nutshell. Good work. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I, for example, I used two, two fields and two effectors to do the, the scaling of the leaves and the color drift because when I saw the result, I realized that we need a little bit of offset between the scaling effect and the color uh, effect. But you can do that in with the with just one 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 effector and one field. I mean, the, the other part is just tweak the, 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 the details, you know? Yeah, you did, you, you had, you set up so much uh, control um it's it's awesome um yeah. are there any other uh questions because i wanted to make sure that i didn't go all the way to the end so that we had time for questions from anyone uh for oliver about uh this project and his workflow and, and everything yes let's do it no specific ones at the moment, Darren, not about the process. Oh, no, I'll speak to you soon. Jonathan's jumped in too um, with a quick question. In the final film, the vinyl leaves were sometimes in close-up. How did you ensure the model had enough detail? Did you have to remodel this? Uh, Jonathan, you, you saw the, the whole break maybe on the internet or, or, or you, you wanna... are talking about, you are going to, you are talking about the, uh, of the, the, the specific shot or the, the another shot on the, that project? I think a specific shot on that project, and it, in fact, I'll make you a presenter again, Oliver. Okay. And it's the, bit, yeah, Jonathan uh, says it's the bit where the girl was running through the vines. Yeah, so but uh, bring that one up, the, and we can talk the, about it. The thing is, I'm not allowed to show you the whole spot, uh, and I'm able to 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 show you just that part. But as Jonathan said, I don't I don't know where uh, maybe he saw the the, the whole spot. But on the on the, the 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 original spot, we have a like extreme close up in in one branch, and for that purpose, I uh, made the the another another setup with uh, some joints, some uh, skinning, with some really uh, nice model of the branch. I sculpt uh, a branch with a lot of detail, so yeah, it was a different approach because you always uh, you you're always um, have to have in mind that 
uh, what, uh, where are your, your, your limitations? Where are the, the, the setup limits? So in this case, this, this is work to, this is working to, to, for a medium shot, for example, even a, a, a closer look. But if you go maybe just, I don't know, super, super uh, close to, to, the, to the camera, maybe you're going to need another setup. So you, you have to know what is the limit of your setup. And that is a good thing. If you, if you, if you can uh, planify the, the whole thing, you are going to, to end with a, with, a, with a better result. I not uh, I'm not going to try to to do some in an extreme close up with this setup for example that that is my my advice you know and that's why I use in the whole spot uh, a, a specific setup for an extreme close up you know with even with with a, a, a little fiber uh, or little hair from the, the the branches when you look some branch uh, like in a super close, uh, closer uh, look, you're going to see a lot of detail. So in this case, you don't have that. And that's why you, you uh, have to do it in a, in a different setup, in my opinion, you know? Got it, yes, absolutely. Having a, a hero for the close-ups. Yes, that's a very yeah. common technique. Um, Lionel has asked about the intersections and to avoid any nasty visual intersections, can you use the collider tag? Mm, in, in this case, you are not using the, the dynamic uh, engine. So you don't, don't, don't have like collisions calculation. In, 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 the, in this particular case, you are not seeing like any, th th there, there are some, some uh, uh, intersections, but you almost uh, don't see it, you know. But you can do. In this case, the the, the my main uh, concern is it, it was in that moment that I, I don't want to have the two branches too closer each other, you know, or, or even uh, in, in the same in the same um, position. So. For that purpose, I set up my hair system, uh, the guide uh, tab, with a minimum spacing distance. Uh, and, and I have these 2.5 uh, centimeters, which is the, the, the radius of the, the branch, the actual mesh. And when you activate this, uh, the, the hair system don't put two, two um, Two guides uh, closer than this distance, so you can avoid this that that kind of uh, of intersection. And Correct. for the other ones, you need to be on a dynamic calculation or some tricks that I thought in that moment. But when I when I saw the result, I think okay, it's not noticeable. The the, the intersection is it's not noticeable enough to to do it something with that. But you Go can ahead. do. I, I I think that I'm not. Um, if I if I have to do it, maybe we are. I, I didn't use uh, uh, the 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 dynamic uh, calculation. I try to figure out how to manage that kind of effect with another tricks maybe. I like how you're thinking in advance. You're solving problems before they happen. And Tyler's asked a follow-up question to the intersecting, which I think you've just answered by managing the spacing ahead of time. Yeah. So it's it's almost like you're used to clients changing their minds over over time. Um, we've yeah. had a couple of questions about the the setup technically, mm -hmm. um, and um, it's always interesting to to talk about that. There's two related questions. One is. Um, Aaron was asking about hardware and how you both ensure viewpoint performance. And if you're on a PC, are you using like 30 series RTX cards? And there was a, a side question from Kent, which is related to, with, did you have to use any proxies in developing the whole scene or did it run smoothly enough without? I did use proxy for the, uh, let me show you the, the the final shot. 
all of uh, the the more close to camera vines, like one, two, three, four, five, like a seven per side, are actually uh, this this same setup. And then, sorry, and then for the rest of them, I I think that I use proxy, and and I use it uh, a lot. I mean, if you are going to have like a like a static kind of tree, you you can use it. Even you you can have some animation from a proxy with the rich, uh, proxy object. You can have animation. So yes, the answer is yes to to that. Um, it is always uh, difficult to round like uh, I don't know 500 of this uh, <laughs> these models. And you also can maybe do some polygon reduction of this. In 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 that time, I didn't have the time to do it, and it worked very well. Cinema 4D works uh, really really good with uh, big amounts of of polygons. Um, you just uh, don't have to to put some deformation or animation in a in a high polygon object. And the other question was about my hardware, and I, mm, I'm not used um, uh, the RTX, but it's, it's kind of a new kind of uh, graphic. Uh, and my hardware has like a 1080 GTX, the normal one. It's old right now, <laughs> I think. But um, it's running. You know, it's running okay. It's running okay. One well, sort of way to say that. Yeah. Got it. I think Darren's got a a thirty eighty sitting in a Dell tower. Um, how are you yeah. finding that, Darren? I'm loving it. Uh, it's yeah. It's it's quite snappy. Um, rendering is awesome, and uh, yeah, it's it's um, it's it's excellent. I'm I've been enjoying it a lot. This. Uh, project, it's, you know, it's because I'm only, you know, Oliver uh, has the whole uh, vineyard, you know, I'm, I just sort of did one bit of it. Um, yeah. But it's just, it's so snappy and speedy, uh, even compared to the, you know, other machine that I was using, um, that I've been, I've, I've just been loving it very much. Yes. Um, Aaron points out that a 1080 is still a solid card. It wasn't only yeah. a short time ago that yeah. we were very excited to be using a 1080. So this is an excellent yeah. point. And <laughs> those those techniques that you pointed out about using proxies as well are, are also totally valid. And um, Elisa is, or Elisa, forgive me for mispronouncing your name. That's my job, as you know. Um, so how many different tools and programs were being used in this effect? And so we, we've got the cinema aspect of it, of yeah. course, and then you're using some Redshift in here as well. Um, but I, what are you compositing with, Oliver? I, uh, I have a good old friend that is a master in uh, After Effects. So everything is done in the, 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 the composition part is After Effects. And uh, the 3D scan photo photograph was if I remember well, because this is uh, was uh, like a couple of years ago, was 3D uh, iSoft. iSoft was the, the, the software to to take the, the 3D scan photo. And that's all. I mean, the, the, the whole kind of uh, texturing, texturing work and that, that is cinema. Okay, yeah. let, let me let me do let me do a list. Cinema 4D, After Effects, iSoft, and that's all. Yeah. Fantastic. Are we're we just noting noticing the time. Um and Alas has just had a question for branch geometry, um, mm -hmm. which uh, which is for your branch branch geometry for the spline wrapped, how subdivided is it along its length? Let me show you that. Uh, I have this, and let me turn off or disable the. Is uh, it, 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 this thing depend of the how close you are going to be uh, to the to the the actual branch? So in this case, is like this, good enough to to have some really nice deformation uh, across the 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 most plane. 
with the spline wrap. So if you go to the actual uh, deformation, you can see that you have to, to you have to have a decent amount of polygon in order to to get a, a nice deformation with the, the deformer so but more along the length not so much exactly like, exactly yeah i i always try to to do uh, this match in a in a balanced way so you you can see on here that we have almost a, a square and maybe there is pointed to that because you don't need uh, like a lot of subdivision in a in the the, the radial part. I, I would say, okay, yeah. you need a lot of subdivision, but in a in a long term, in a long term of the the, the match, mm -hmm. good enough yeah. to 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 have the 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 deformation in a in a good shape, you know. I don't know if that answered the question. Maybe absolutely. Absolutely. And, absolutely. And at this distance, you can't even really tell that it's, it's, uh, it's exactly. Close. Yeah, exactly. Great. Um, I'm going to grab the screen again, just because we're we've slightly overrun. But as as we have we joked before, we um, trainers always end exactly when they mean to. So let's <laughs> just open up. Sorry, I turned on my camera. Very cool, awesome project, Oliver. It, really, it is really cool. Thank it's you. Thank you all. Fantastic. Hope you like it. Love it. Really, really cool. And we've had a couple of requests for some project files, and we'll be showing project files of over the series of these different webinars. And Darren's going to add his project file, and we'll add that to the links that when we publish it in the YouTube channel, which will be in a couple of hours by the time it's processed and downloaded. So have a look at that. But um, I just also wanted to remind you, go and have a look at Believe.tv, which is Oliver's firm's website and also just as a, as an aside because Oliver is a master trainer for us and if you work in a team he can train you in Spanish and in English in fact and so I just wanted to remind you if you have a team and then you automatically qualify for with your volume licenses for training custom training sessions from our training team and we can run those in English and in Spanish and in German and in French and in Japanese and in Chinese as well Ooh. and we're developing other languages too yes absolutely that's awesome, <laughs> that's awesome. yeah we're, we're, we're trying to extend it and make it um, more friendly for as many people as all the different languages in the uh, in the software actually when we're translating the certification exams too we're in the middle of translating them to, into turkish and we've got german and english language versions and we're also working on french too so if you have any particular language requests let us know because then that's always, always useful for us and as a final final little reminder um, yes we are recording these they're all on our youtube channel so maxon training team so please have a look at those and you can look at all the ones that we've done. I think it's like 80 or 90 hours worth of webinars over the last 12 months that we've got on there. Wow. And this one will be up soon with all the links to the downloads and so on. And also please join us again next week Well, we'll be looking at, here we go, let's go on to the events page at maxon.net and just click on the events page down here. And next week, um, Jonas and Ellie and Matt will be joining us and we'll be looking at, in this particular case, some product visualization and spending time to how to get those beautiful edge shadows and reflections, which are some of the key things specifically and talking about um, add variation to the projects. So you don't just get flat repetition over surfaces and so on. So that's there's a specific answer to many of your requests and questions that you'll have asked us either by email or by the survey at the end of the webinar. So if you do have a question, we want us to cover something on Ask the Trainer, which is back on on Thursday, of course. Come and join us for that. And we'll be talked about sculpting specifically. And also um, the we'll be talking about some of the sculpting things you can do in Forger, which is a new member of the Maxon family. So we're very excited about that. And oh, Forger is the... Yes, it's the I, the iPad app or an iPhone app that you can actually play with the the actual models themselves. Um, and so some lovely feedback for you, Oliver, from Peter, Andres, Jennifer, Kent, Regine, Lionel, Greg, Anna, Aaron, Drake, and Nick. So thank you for for everyone. Anna's asked for Portuguese. Um, we do run grading sessions in Portuguese and Spanish as well. Uh, Diego runs them for us. So we'll, we'll but that's a great one for cinema too. So we'll look into that, Anna. 
so uh, and really appreciate that thank you for all the the nice comments um and um it's this is why we do it to actually make sure that it's relevant and useful for you too so this this is cool so thank you again and thanks darren for answering the questions behind the scenes and My pleasure. For, for running that how do i do this from scratch session because I, I think that's also a useful take on it yes otherwise that's on brilliant thank you again everyone oh, thank um, you we'll, all. See you on the next one of these. Uh, please join us on Thursday for Ask the Trainer or next Monday back for the next one in this series. But thanks again oh. for joining us. Take thanks care. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.